Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> it's Tuesday again. Welcome back to another Training Tuesday. Today, as the title card said, we're talking about group grids and effects. So, um, grids are nothing new in Magic Cube. We've been building them for years and years and years for the Pixel Mapper. However, something that's, um, again, not new, but has, is newer than the grids is group grids. So every group we have has a grid associated with it. So right now I just have a handful of strike M's in here. They're a good fixture that has a couple different function types. Let us show you how you can do that. But basically you can click any group at any time in the group window. You can come up top and you can hit view grid. In view grid, you're gonna see a grid. Now what you do with this grid is up to you. Right now these are all in a straight line. But what we can easily do is we can come into view grid. We can set a grid size. And we can start arranging our fixtures. Now this can be easily done in a lot of different ways. You can come in here and touch an individual fixture, move it around. You can literally drag move. There's lots of different ways to do it. In this case, because I have a few straight rows of fixtures, I can do this pretty quickly simply by grabbing other groups. So we'll move this back over to actually put it down here. And if I come and make a few more groups to help me facilitate this, so clear out. I'm going to grab this top row. Clear out. We're going to grab the mid row. And then we'll grab the bottom row. Yeah. Back to layout one. So I have my three groups here now. We open up our output window, put over, and go back to our view grid for all of our fixtures there. There's our nice big grid, plenty of space to work. I can simply grab one set of fixtures, come in here and say insert heads. They are duplicate element fixtures. We've gone over this before, but we'll go through it again. Duplicate horizontal, left to right, boom, there they are. I'll grab my second group of fixtures. Insert heads, duplicate horizontal, left to right. Grab my third group of fixtures. And lastly, same thing. There we go. Now from here, I could space these out more. I can move them around. I can do a lot of different things. Um, making the grid this large gave me plenty of room to work, but now I can easily hold down shift in here, and there's a button up here that says crop grid. That's going to get rid of all the dead space on the grid. Now I may want to kind of even these up, so maybe I want to grab this group. Move them up. There we go. That looks pretty good. Again, spacing is relative. Whatever you want to do with the grid to emulate your rig. This is good enough for our example today. And now I have this grid to work with. I can do this for every group. So I don't think we need to today. But I could very easily come in here and go to the first row. View grid. Obviously, it's going to auto place everything. But if we set grid size... Again, to something large. There we go. And we will crop grid. There's our 10 fixtures in a row. So it's that simple. A grid can contain some all or some or all elements. So for example, we have grids for our function types. So here, because I've patched the strike M, it automatically made me a function type for the plates and for the beams. So if I go into one of these and I hit view grid, this is going to give me a grid that has just the plates. Now again, this is kind of out of whack. So if we wanted to, we could come in here and we could go do the exact same thing that we just did. We'll remove those. Wrong side. And I can break these up. I'm, I'm not gonna go through all that trouble of building the same grid over and over and over. But the point is, we could very easily come in here and make that grid. So we'll just insert these as general. They're just going to go in there in a straight line. And we'll use that as an example in a little bit. There you go. And then our plate's more of the same. We'll keep that as a grid just to show you how it works. Now, once we have the grids built, they're associated with the group. <clears throat> and we can use those to build effects. So using the all group... Excuse me one second. A little frog in my throat. Using our all group here, we can very easily go up, say add group effects. We can say any attribute. We'll just do a, uh, 
let's just do a sign down on the team dimmer and we will include elements there we go you see it's running like a normal effect if we view the grid here it just runs like normal nothing nothing too fancy but if we come in here into our group effect and we scroll over to the group spread field we have a few new newer options in there so all channels is going to run like a normal effect as you see it's just snaking through in order of channel we can do within groups which would break it up we'll do that in a minute and then we now have grid horizontal grid vertical and grid all so if i say grid horizontal you can see that that effect is now pulsing through. Let's uh, size that up a little bit so it's more obvious. It's now pulsing through horizontally across the grid. Likewise, we can come in here and we can say grid vertical. And now you see it's going down through the grid. So the effect will use the grid. It'll use the fixtures however they're laid out. You can rearrange these fixtures and the effect will update the next time you run it. Very, very simple. Um, we also have another new field that comes with this. If we keep scrolling over, we have group offset. Group offset will kind of uh, asymmetrically or symmetrically phase the effect. Now you see it's kind of a every other kind of thing. 40%. Yeah, almost like a matrix eyedrop thing going on. So you can play with that to kind of shuffle up the effect within the grid to be able to make some really cool things happen. In addition, all the other things that you'd expect to find in the effects generator do work. So if we go horizontal and we go back here to the add field, we can, oh, not the add field, direction field. And if we say center out, there's our effect going center out. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of really cool things you can do with this. And the fact that you can do it per element or per function type, you could have a grid that has your entire rig. You're not restricted to just the group grid when you do this. So by default, because I added the effect to this group here over at the very end, grid ID, it's using the group grid. However, if I just wanted this to run on the grid, say for the plates, I could look at my group window and say, okay, the plates are group number two. If we do view grid, they are grid number group two. So if I come in here and I say set value two, in theory, that effect should start using that grid instead. Uh, I think that's actually 102. There we go. Because it's a group grid, it starts in the hundreds. But you see how the effect is shifted now and it's just applying to the plates. Now the plates are out of order right now because we didn't build that grid. But it's pretty cool that we can assign this to different grids. There it is on just the beams. Or we just simply go back to the group grid and we're back to happy. So you can reapply this to different grids, different groups. We wanted to do 106. It's primarily applying it to the top. So you can do some really cool stuff. Um, and again, because it's grid-based, moving stuff around in the grid is going to move how the effect runs. But pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So just build a grid. Once you build that grid, you can apply any effect to it. And yeah, I think that's all I got. Let's uh, see if Ash has any questions popping up down there. Nope. Nothing so far. All right. You guys are all quiet today. Must be too early. Too early for me. Definitely too early for me. Cool. Well, check it out. Uh, download uh, 1972 just dropped as a, a new release. So you guys can grab that. It has all this in it. We've had this in there for a while. This is nothing super fancy and new. But uh, yeah, check it out. See how it works. Um, try to make the best use of it. Uh, it's best to build those grids with your groups before you start programming. Then they're at your fingertips and you can very easily do that. Uh, keep in mind, you can also, like I said, assign that effect to non-group grids. So if you have a regular uh, user grid, so somewhere up here in grid number one through 99, 
you can absolutely build a grid that has multiple groups in it and still apply that effect to that grid using that uh the grid id field within the effects uh spreadsheet so yeah thank you everybody for coming um check out the other uh videos we're now both on facebook and youtube with these and i think dan can confirm i think we're porting a lot of the older facebook stuff over to youtube maybe um, so you guys will be able to find this in multiple platforms and obviously without logging in, which is nice. So you have to be logged into Facebook to deal with it. And, uh, yeah, come back and see us next Tuesday for the next topic and we'll uh, see you guys soon. Thank you.